Hey YouTubers, this is Lonnie Clark again, Nuts for Art. And being a student of John Goffman, I thought I would implement today, finally, and it's been on my mind for a while, to look up actually who are the responsible parties out at Republic Services, the company where they have what they call a subsurface smoldering event. <laughs> How do you like that? That's an underground fire at their uh, waste site out there at the Westlake Landfill that's only less than a thousand feet away from uh, the uh, Westlake Landfill nuclear dump site. So uh, instead of calling it Republic Services and talking about Republic Services and saying how horrible Republic Services is for abandoning the people of St. Louis. And they actually caused the fire with their bad practices. They didn't even follow their own rules and cause this, quote, subservice smoldering event. It's a fire and it is escaping and, and it is interacting with having previously leaked nuclear radioactivity. Teenagers, as we heard on my radio show, have bloody noses from their ears, they're bleeding. Uh, young children are getting tumors and brain cancers, leukemias, birth defects, they're dying. O older people are dying. People are getting weird genetic diseases. I've been reporting on it pretty regularly on my radio show every single Monday. I, li I like to interview somebody. My idea about St. Louis as an outsider, because I'm not even part of that community, um, I really believe that we need to have the people of that are near the Westlake Landfill and the Coldwater Creek uh, nuclear dump sites essentially is what they are. Those people need to be moved. And the American government needs to stop messing around with it. They need to get them moved immediately. And uh, the continued exposure to this radiation and the unknown amounts of radiation is, it's not even low level. It's, it's off the charts. One lady's house had been measured by the EPA and they said it was 539 counts per minute. That, my dear friends, is not low level radiation, not in the slightest. So I went to Republic Services to try to get the name of the CEOs. And then this popped up. It was a little pop-up box. I had to agree to the terms for investor services before I could look up the names of the CEOs. So I was reading this and I thought, huh, I'm going to print this out. I copy and pasted it and put it out on uh, a, a Word document, and I've saved it. But let me read this to you. It is quite an earful. This website contains certain forward-looking information about us that is intended to be covered by the safe harbor for forward-looking statements provided by the Private Securities Litigation Reform Act of 1995. Private Securities Litigation Reform Act of 1995. Got some, I have some homework to do on that one. Forward-looking statements are statements that are not historical facts. Huh. This website contains certain forward-looking information, so that means that they're basically lying. Words such as guidance, expect, will, may, anticipate, plan, estimate, project, intend, or project, intend, should, can, likely, could, outlook, and other similar expressions are identify are intended to identify forward-looking statements. So anytime they say that, they can be lying right through their teeth. These statements include statements about our plans, strategies, and prospects. Forward-looking statements are not guarantees of pro performance. These statements are based upon the current beliefs and expectations of our management and the subject and are subject to risk and uncertainties that could cause actual results to differ materially from those expressed in or implied or projected by the forward-looking information and statements. Wouldn't you love that? We can just save any forward-looking statement and say whatever the heck we want. Also, although we believe that the expectations reflected in this forward-looking statements are reasonable, we cannot assure you that the expectations will prove to be correct. <laughs> this is where I start cussing, you guys. Honestly, you know why I'm not cussing for my best friend, Mary, who lives in Louisiana. I went to, I went to go see her 
she basically said, you know what, Lonnie, like, I never listen to anybody who cusses. So if I didn't know you, I would never listen to you. So in deference to Mary and people like her, I am making a stringent effort to refrain from cussing. Among the factors that could cause actual results to differ materially from the expectations expressed in the forward-looking statements are the impact on us of our substantial indebtedness, including, uh, including on our ability to obtain financing on acceptable terms to finance our operations and growth strategy and to operate within the limitations imposed by financing arrangements, general economic and market conditions, including inflation and changes in commodity pricing, fuel, interest rates, risk, labor, health insurance, and other variable costs that generally are not within our control and our exposure to credit and counterparty risk. Whether our estimates and assumptions concerning our selected balance sheets accounts, income tax accounts, final capping, closure, post-closure, and remediation costs, available airspace and projected costs and expenses related to our landfills and properties and equipment, uh, including our estimates of the fair values of these of the assets and liabilities required acquired in our acquisition of Allied, and labor fuel rates and economic and inflationary trends turn out to be correct or appropriate. Huh. So what does that mean? Whether our estimates and assumptions concerning our selected balance sheet accounts, income tax accounts, final capping, closure, post income tax accounts turn out to be correct and appropriate? Hmm, maybe we ought to call the IRS and ask them to be investigated, huh? Okay, uh, competition and demand for services in the solid waste industry. Price increases to our customers may not be adequate to offset the impact of increased costs, including labor, third-party disposal and fuel, and may cause us to lose volume. Our ability to manage growth and execute our growth strategy, our compliance with and future changes in environmental and flow control regulations, and our ability to obtain approvals from regulatory agencies in connection with operating and expanding our landfills, our ability to retain our investment grade ratings for our debt, our dependence on key personnel, our dependence on large long-term collection transfer and disposal contracts, our business is capital intensive and may consume cash in excess of cash flow from operations. <laughs> These people are completely unabashed in saying we're completely cheats and liars. That's what this is saying. Uh, wow. <clears throat> Where was I? <laughs> that one stunned me. Okay. Any exposure to environmental liabilities or remediation requirements to the extent not adequately covered by insurance could result in substantial expenses. Risks associated with undisclosed liabilities of acquired businesses. Risks associated with pending and future legal proceedings, including litigation, audits, or investigations brought by or before any governmental agencies. Hoo-hoo! The IRS, I think we need to talk to the IRS because they're sitting here saying that they can't agree to maybe the, even their income tax returns, that maybe they're not accurate. You know, the number one per thing that happens why people get these big companies get investigated is people rat them out to the IRS. So I'm not saying I'm going to do it, but maybe somebody out there might want to pull this statement up to the IRS and say, hmm, maybe you should be looking at them. You can do that uh, anonymously, by the way. Severe weather conditions, including those brought about by climate change, could impair our financial results by causing increased costs, loss of revenue, reduced operational deficiency, and disruptions in our operations. Compliance with existing and future legal and regulatory requirements, including limitations or bans of disposal of certain types of waste or on the transportation of waste, could limit our ability to conduct or grow our business, increase our costs, and operate and require additional capital expenditures. Potential increases in our costs if we, require, if we are required to provide additional funding to any multi-employer pension plan to which we contribute, or if a withdrawal event occurs with respect to any multi-employer pension plan to which we contribute. 
the negative impact of our operations of union organizing campaigns, work stoppages, and labor shortages, the negative impact that trends towards requiring recycling, waste, waste reduction at the source, and prohibiting, and prohibiting the disposal of certain types of waste could have on volumes of waste going to landfills. Oh my God, Mary, I want to cuss so bad. Changes by the financial accounting standards boards or other accounting regulatory bodies that generally, that to generally accepted accounting principles or policies. And last but not least, acts of war, riots, or terrorism, including the continuing war on terrorism. Hmm. Oh, these people, they make me want to cuss. As well as actions taken or to be taken by the United States or other governments as a result of further acts or threats of terrorism and the impact on these economic, financial, and social conditions in the United States. The risks included are not above are not exhaustive. Please refer to Part 1, Item 1A, Risk Factors, in our annual report on Form 10K for the year December 31st, 2013, for further discussion regarding our exposure to risks. Additionally, new risk factors emerge from time to time. It is not possible for us to predict all risk factors and to assess the impact of such risk factors might have on our business or to the extent to which any factor or combination of factors may cause actual result from differ materially from those contained in any forward-looking documents. Forward-looking documents means you can say whatever lie you want about your business. That's what it means. That's what they're saying. Everything contained in their website could be a complete lie. Everything. Because they have all this big laundry list of reasons why that would be reasonable. You should not place any undue reliance on any forward-looking statements on our website, which speak only which speak only as of the date they were placed on the website. Wow. Except to the extent required by applicable law or regulations, we undertake no obligation to update or publish revised forward-looking statements to reflect events and circumstances circumstances after such date and to reflect the occurrence of unanticipated events which means since the world is finding out that these uh, monsters at republic services have summarily decided to sacrifice the people of st louis with their continues lies and their denial and their refusal to help re relocate the families who are living within one mile of that nuclear dump site or one mile from the, uh, what do they call that? Underground, uh, underground, they're not calling it a fire. They're calling it a underground, mm, I forget, it's, it's some acronym they came up with. Anyways, these are the monsters. Now, this is their opening page. Oh, here's that page. Hold on just a second. Let me lean over here and I'll get this. What's it called? It's called a subsurface smoldering event. These people are monsters. Subsurface smoldering event. That's what they're calling the fire that's 300 feet deep that they cannot put out because they grotesquely mismanaged the waste. They allowed all kinds of toxic stew to be dumped in this site. They didn't even keep track of it against their own good good practices, procedures that they had on their own books. I guess because of their forward-looking statements, they don't have to do jack, right? So anyways, this is the beginning of their website, and this is what it says. You can count on us. Yeah, count on them to, you know what? See, this is a good thing I'm not cussing because I'd be throwing the F-bomb all around right now. Our philosophy, so this is laughable. At Republic Services, we're guided by five essential core values to be respectful, responsible, reliable, resourceful, and relentless in all we do every day. Our highly passionate professional team is reminded of these principles every time they see the five R's joined together to form the Republic Services star. That's what makes us who we are, reminding us to keep our customers at the heart of it all. 
our operations. Republic Services, Inc. was incorporated in 1996 with a can-do spirit, driving its dramatic growth and acquisitions through the years, welcoming other organizations to share its values and fiduciary dis discipline. Wow. Today, Republic Services, Inc. is the lo second largest provider of services in the domestic non-hazard waste industry as measured by revenue as well as a Fortune 500 company publicly traded on the New York Stock Exchange. So we need to start calling these people out. Through our subsidiaries, we provide non-hazardous solid waste and recycling services for commercial, industrial, municipal, and residential customers. Our customers come first as we strive to safely and sustainably provide reliable service through 338 collection operations, 200 transfer stations, 193 active solid waste landfills, and 66 recycling centers, and 90 and 69 landfill gas and renewable energy projects across 39 states and Puerto Rico. Wow. Republic Services is a holding company and all operations are conducted by its subsidiaries. Right. Nobody's responsible at Republic Services. That's, that's the idea behind a holding company is you let all these other corporations do the work and then the holding company just files the tax returns as one. These people are evil and quite evil. Republic Services, Inc. is a holding... Okay. Re uh, unless the context required otherwise, all references to Republic, Republic Services, the company, us, we, and are referred to Republic Services, Inc. and its consolidated subsidiaries. Now, this is where we want to get to our leadership. President and Chief executive murderer or officer is Don Slager, S-L-A-G-E-R, Don Slager. Yeah, I'm going to hold this up so you guys can see it. I have to put my glasses on because I can't even see if you're able to see that. When I look over at the computer without my glasses on, it just looks like a complete blank of white paper. There we go. So there you go. That's their names, Don Slager. These are the guys. Brian Bates, Jeff Hughes. I, I'm going to need to read this. These are the monsters making the decisions to allow children to continue to get cancer, people to get cancer, for them to refuse to move people in St. Louis. Uh, President, Chief Executive Officer Don Slager. Mr. Don Slager. Mr. Murderer-in-Chief. Mr. Don Slager, Mr. Murderer-in-Chief, the henchman for the neo-Nazis at Republic Services. I guess that's insulting the Nazis, isn't it? People say, don't call us Nazis. They weren't Nazis. They were, I forget the name. So I'm not going to get into that one. But these people are worse than Hitler. And they're worse than Himmler. And they're worse than all those other monsters from the Third Reich. Because the Third Reich really honestly they didn't know what they were doing they were just you know madmen going mad these people know exactly what they're doing they know exactly the lies they're perpetrating they could give a darn about a single human being in st louis including probably their own children i doubt if any of these people live in st louis and I suppose that's going to be my next project of homework to find out these people's home addresses. They all have names. They all have addresses. We need to start go protesting in front of their houses. Mr. Brian Bates. No, not Bates. See, need my glasses off. Chief Development Officer Brian Bales. Chief Administrative Officer Jeff Hughes. Chief Transformation Officer Stuart Levy. Chief Customer Officer Tom Lynch, Chief Operating Officer Bob Marooster, Chief Legal Officer and Corporate Secretary Mike Rissman, Legal Officer, probably an attorney, Chief Financial Officer Chuck Seriani, Chief Marketing Officer John Vander Ark, John Vander Ark, the Chief Liar, Chief Liar. I, I am I am very, very, very angry about this. This is the most unconscionable thing I think I've heard about. In fact, 
Uh, very briefly, the lady that I interviewed today on my radio show, Wendy, said to me something about Niagara Falls. There's something going on in Niagara Falls. Um, I think what we've heard is that Malincrot, who used to own what Republic Services now has, dumped a lot of the waste in the Niagara Falls. I'm I'm put out some feelers on that. I don't know how true that is, but you know what? Probably is. If she heard it, it's probably true. So I wanted to also read this. I know this is getting long. I imagine I've been talking for 10 or 20 minutes now. Let me see what time it is. Whew, it is right at 20 minutes. But I, I won't read the whole thing. But this is their political contributions policy dated April 2010. As a company in the environmental services industry, Republic Services, Inc., is subject to federal, state, and legal legislation and regulation that can significantly affect how we conduct our business. The legal and regulatory landscape include laws relating to land use, taxation, transportation, employees, and the environment, blah, blah, blah. We also believe it is our responsibility as a good corporate citizen to participate in the political process and to do so in a lawful and prudent and ethical manner. Ethical. These guys have the effing nerve to even use that word. To that end, the company has established a political contributions policy and related procedures to ensure that our employees and other company representatives participate at all times in the political process in compliance with the law. And now they have a free-for-all since uh, the monster Scalia gave a free hand to everybody, Scalia and Roberts. So I hope, I actually hope there is a hell. I actually, I don't really believe in hell, but I am beginning to really hope that there is a hell. I swear. These people deserve it. Blah, blah, blah. I'm moving down. So, uh, Republic Services also maintains, let's see. There was one little paragraph in here that was just totally hilarious. Okay, yeah. The company will not pressure or coerce employees to make personal political contributions and will not take retaliatory actions against employees who do not make political contributions. While employees may participate as individual citizens in the political process, decisions to do so are entirely voluntary. Employees are prohibited from being reimbursed directly or through compensation increases for personal political contributions. In addition to supporting political candidates, from time to time, Republic belongs to trades associations that focus on matters concerning our business interests. Such organizations include the National Solid Waste Management Association and its local chapters that have been organized. NSWMA provides education and training opportunities, blah, blah, blah. For purposes of this policy, the political contribution is defined as any direct or indirect payment, distribution, loan, advance, deposit, or gift of money, services, or anything of value, or use the company of equipment, blah, blah, blah. So, look, let me go back to these people's names, because this is what we need to do. We need to start referring to the owners of Republic Services, and we need to refer to Dr. I mean, Mr. Don Slager as the chief uh, murderer in chief. Uh, that's what he is, the murderer in chief. He has intentionally decided to ignore the murder that he is causing to the children and to the people of St. Louis. And it is time for us to call him out by name, Mr. Don Slager. Let's make that name the tip of our tongue, Don Slager. Because right now we've all been saying, oh, that monster Bill Gates, the monster Bill Gates. No, 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 folks. These, these are the monsters. These are the rats who could care less about their fellow citizens in the United States. These are the rats that could care less if children are dying of cancer. These rats are the ones that we need to call out. And, you know, frankly, instead of calling them rats, I'm going to call them misguided. And we're going to focus on changing their paradigm so that they will actually remember their humanity. And remember that we live on one planet. We don't live on two planets. There's no spare planet to go to. So these people are breathing in the same radiation that they're spewing all over North America. We have many, many people that have told me that there are many sites that we don't even know about. And I guarantee it, these people know exactly where their stuff is. So... 
Put your courage feet on, you guys. We need to take some action, and we need to, uh, I hope that people will go to Republic Services, look at these people's names, start calling them out and telling them that, you know what, it is their responsibility to help the people of St. Louis. These people are billionaires, and guess what? The people of St. Louis are dying. Uh, something is seriously wrong with that picture. So it's up to us to actively engage and to help our fellow Americans and the people, just not even Americans, but you know, it is just time for this whole paradigm about let's pretend like nuclear waste isn't such a big, huge problem. That whole paradigm has got to end. It is a public health emergency at this point. We have ignored Fukushima for five years. Now we've ignored uh, a smoldering fire in St. Louis for five years. We've ignored Hanford. Uh, the chickens are coming home to roost, and it doesn't look good. So put your courage feet on, you guys. Uh, I'll talk to you later. Bye. Let's see if I can turn this thing off.